And thanks for joining us for this special edition of Weekend Winners. We are on the eve of ID23. This is the first time the Inter-Dominion has returned to the Sunshine State since 2009. The first time the series has been held at Albion Park since 2001. And back in 2001, we had the Pacers and the Trotters. It was the Kiwis that came, saw and conquered. Yule Star taking the pacing final and take a moment taking the trotting final. Who's going to come out on top in 2023? Well, hopefully, in this edition of Weekend Winners, we can steer you into a winner or two and hopefully come up with the grand final winners. We've got a lot to look forward to. The series starts Friday night. Seven heats, four for the Pacers, three for the Trotters. We're over the mile distance. On Tuesday night, we return to Albion Park this time over the middle distance journey of 2,138 metres. Next Saturday night, we're over the grand final distance, 2,600 metres, and the grand final will take place on Saturday, December 16, at Albion Park over that 2,600 metre journey for both the Pacers and the Trotters. A lot to look forward to. Thirsty Merck perform, uh, performing on grand finals night as well. Here to help us find a winner or two, we've got Darren Clayton and Ryan Spice. Darren, firstly, uh, welcome along. Inter Dominion, it's always special, there's no doubt about it. Have you got a special highlight from your memory bank for this series? Yeah, I've got a few. You know, it's, it's a great race. I've, uh, I've met lucky enough to go to quite a few of them. Two of the ones that really stick out for me, 1997, uh, Rainbow Knight almost getting to our events lot. Still, I'd love to see a developed print of that. I'm sure Rainbow Knight got there. And the other one being Proud Bathurst Lad, Smooth Satin 2002 at Harold Park. Um, that was a great night, um, plenty of excitement there. And the other one, the last one at the Valley, 2008, Blackie. I was there that night as well, and that was a super night. Okay, Ryan, what about you? Into Dominion, you've got to have a highlight or two. Yeah, it's a series I love the most, Chris. Probably two highlights for me. I love Shaker Maker's win, just rocketing down the outside. And, you know, I always love a horse that can come from last and, and prevail. But I think the pinnacle for me is Blackie, 2010, three deep the last thousand at Menangle out toughed him. Monkey King had the cold shot, couldn't get him. That was uh, into Dominion glory for me. Okay, we've got clear favourites for both series here for the Pacers and the Trotters. The local star Leap to Fame in the Pacing series, reigning champ in the Trotting series, Just Believe. Are you with both at this stage? I'm certainly clearly with Just Believe. I think this series is perfect and he's an absolutely worthy favourite. My heart says leap to fame, but my betting, my betting hat on at the early current price for the series, I'd have to back Swayze over him. Okay, what about you, Darren? Yeah, just believe it's hard to look past him with what his, his trip to Scandinavia, his back, the first up run, he's just going to be getting better as this series progresses. Leap to fame, I think, I think he gets it done. I think this time around, I'll... I've said previously, I think he would have got him in the Blacks of Fake if that, without that wheel issue. And, and, you know, it's all a matter of opinions, and that, that's my opinion, and I think he'll, he'll do the job this time. OK, well, they are the favourites right now. Leap the fame for the pacing series, just believe for the trotting series. Don't forget, we've got first four jackpots on all of the heats coming through on Friday night. So those projected pools, $50,000 for each heat. And don't forget the bonus bet back offer as well. Up to $50 if your horse runs second across all nights of the series, you will get your money back. So make sure you check that out with Tab as well. So we've got a lot to get through and we look forward to discussing heat number one. Race number two on Friday night at Albion Park. This is heat one of the series and we start with the Trotters and we start with a big clash here between the two Victorians, Mufasa Metro and Olivici. They are clearly at the head of the betting as far as this heat is concerned and you're either in one corner or the other. Mufasa Metro gets the early advantage, barrier one, Olivici drawn in three. Darren, I'll come to you firstly. Uh, does it look a, a two horse race here between these two Victorians? Yeah, I think it certainly does, especially the way uh, they come into this series. Clearly the class of the race. Uh, I think Constantinople, probably a little bit of a, a question mark just of what he can produce. He steps up to the, you know, this elite level, but Olivici, Mifasa Metro, they're, they're shown at this level. They, they can handle it. Uh, just interesting early what actually happens. We know Mifasa Metro, super beginner. He has released the front at his past couple, probably the last time. Um, didn't really release, he got pressured into releasing and don't think he, in an ideal situation, John Justice probably would have liked him to have hot, held the front, um, but he ended up in the trail and it was a really good run. But I think 
it's Olive Chim and Fast Metro certainly having a good look at each other early on. Okay, Ron, do you think the Victorians hold the key to this heat? Yeah, absolutely. They will, they will dominate this race from the front end. All right. Let's, Let's go, go back, back to last Saturday night at Albion Park. My alderman Eddie was able to uh, take out this race. He lines up. He's the only Q-bred trotter in this field, guys, and here he is peeling off the back of Tam O'Shanter and uh, he's able to go on for a very good victory. Rewarding because he's been so consistent of late. So this is a big thrill for Mark Rees, Darren, because at the start of the year, he'd never trained a trotter. Here he is in ID23 with not just one trotter, my ultimate Eddie, the only Q-bred trotter, but he's also got Call Me Trouble as well. Yeah, and my ultimate Eddie, he's been super consistent, just hasn't been sort of getting a win on the board, but he's been placing in this level here in Queensland, and that was, that was just reward there last week. And, um, he's a, a really good follower of, of Tempo, so if he gets the right position and doesn't have to spend a penny, he can certainly run on and gain really good points in this heat. So, um, you know, he can tuck in just behind there, likely probably 1-1, one, one, maybe, you know, thereabouts, close enough. And with the Tempo going to be strong at the front, that sort of suits him out of that race too. Um, we see a few of the others that will go around in this series, um, you know, my old, all all credit to my old Manetti out of that race mm. we just we saw there. All right, so are you with Mufasa Metro or are you going with Olivici? I'm going with Olivici. So I think he can bully his way to the front. If he doesn't get to the front, I think he can sit outside um, Mufasa Metro and beat him fair and square. So either scenario, I think he gets to the front. Um, under that scenario, Mufasa Metro will get the last shot at him. Um, but I think he gets to the front. Constantinople probably has to, to chair up because outside of those, maybe Van Sank has an early look. He does have good early speed, but, yeah, that's how I'm heading. All right, so you're in the corner of Olivici. Ryan, do you agree with that? Do you think they'll be keen to hold with Mufasa Metro, given it is a mile? And Constantinople, he's looked so good winning in Sydney, and he comes into this series fresh, but he won a trial last week by a huge margin. Do you give him any sort of hope? Uh, not from his barrier draw for Constantinople. I think that hurts him significantly. And he's not blessed with super early speed. Mm. Um, back to the two big guns, I think this is the perfect setup for Mufasa Metro. Barrier one, mile, he's a gate speed horse. He'll be leading, he'll be holding. John Justice won't be handing to Olavici, in my opinion, if he, can, uh, if he can prevent it. And I think he's one of the better bets on the card. Okay, yeah, I'm with you as well. I, I like Mufasa Metro. Drawn to lead, drawn to win for mine. I'll give you a stat, Darren. They've raced nine times these horses, Mufasa Metro, Olavici. Five times Olavici has beaten home Mufasa Metro. So five, four. So there you go, you're with Olavici. Uh, yeah, advantage me by the look of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going 3152, Ryan going with 136 and 8. My number's in full there, 136 and 5. So that is heat one for the Trotters coming through on Friday night. Round one, heat one for the Pacers comes up as race three on Friday night. Rock and roll do steps out here for Victoria. Michael Stanley, his trainer driver, coming up against the local star, the emerging star in Future Assured. And they're clearly at the top of the betting, these two horses. Future Assured, he's got gate five. Rock and roll do. Must overcome the outside of the front line, gate number seven. So, Darren, as I come to you here, map-wise, uh, have you got both of these horses going forward? Yeah, I think they both roll forward. I think Future Assured will need to hold that early advantage. He's drawn inside, rock and roll do. If he holds that early advantage, Trent Dawson is in the box seat then. I think he can either let rock and roll do go, which is not Trent's style, but um, he does have that option to maximise his points. I think he parks rock and roll do out and tries to beat him. Future assured, he's a miler at his best, in my opinion, and this is his bread and butter right here in the series to get his maximum points. Started a, a four-run win streak with a sub-51 mile, rounded that out with a Be Good Johnny win. Luckless in the Queensland Cup, draw and leap to fame off the front end was against him. So this is his chance to maximise his points. OK, he's been best backed as well, future assured, for this opening round of heats for the Pacers here on Friday night. We'll go back and look at the replay of Future Assured at his most recent start. Here he is chasing home leap to fame in the Queensland Cup. But, Ryan, as I come to you, Darren makes a really good point. Uh, he's fresh, a number of weeks between runs. He's a great fresh horse. He's a great short course horse. So if he's going to strike early, this is his best opportunity. Absolutely, Chris. He would never get a better opportunity to win a Inter-Dominion heat. It's the mile he's avoided. Leap to fame and Swayze, he's got a front row draw. Trent Dawson can use his brilliant speed, 
put him on the front end, make rock and roll do pretty much chase the entire trip. Um, they went up $3 plus. I think he's at his right price now as a clear favourite. I think he's the horse to beat here. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think this is just tailor-made for him on Friday night, coming up with his good draw. He ended up running sixth there in that uh, replay we just watched in the Queensland Cup. But given that the time that they ran in that race, he couldn't have done any more because they went track record speed there, 51.7 for the 2,138. So he's dropping back uh, to his preferred trip of a mile. So you're with the local, Future Assured? Yeah, I'm with him and purely map differential. Rock and roll do, gate seven, he's, he's going to have to do it hard and um, it's the visitors draw first up. He's clearly the class runner, but future assured, he's on the up, four year old, he's certainly progressed really well this latest campaign um, after, after a winter run. So um, take that run out from the Queensland Cup where he did all the work and was still holding horses back in the pack. They didn't get past him either. There was only a few that really ran on out of that race. Mm. Uh, Michael Stanley, we had him on radio during the week. He was talking tough. I don't think he's going to take a backward step here despite the wide draw. Yeah, I've heard a couple of times he, you spoke with him, Chris, and then uh, I heard him again yesterday mention that, you know, he's here to win it and he's here to go forward and he knows he's got a, a really strong chance right through the series, not just in this heat. So, yeah, it's going to be a great race. OK, Ryan, a horse in this race that is creating a little bit of interest, Spirit of St Louis. Uh, they were talking about going to New Zealand. Those plans were derailed. He's had a little bit of a blood disorder. He's been kept fresh and he's got to overcome gate number eight here. Do you give him any sort of knockout chance? Oh, absolutely. He's the only other, I think, potential winning hope. Um, interesting, he's, um, he's at over a month between runs. We haven't seen him back to the trials. Very tricky draw here. Barrier 8, inside back row. Targaryen is not really blessed with super early speed, but I do notice Luke McCarthy's now taking the drive. And then immediately to his outside, he's got Canina Problema. J. Cal has to make a big choice here, whether he um, commits to staying pegs and pushing through and hoping to get a split and therefore finish mm. top four and earn some points. Or if he is going to, I think he has to commit one way or the other. If he's going to ease out, he probably doesn't need to, to jam right up and try to look to get off early. And maybe he and Canina Problema can kind of switch places. Very tricky. But he's a wonderful horse spirit of St. Louis. And over the mile trip, he's finished top three, 18 of his 20 starts. OK, so you're going with Future Assured? Certainly am. OK, Future Assured for Ryan. Are you with Future Assured as well, Darren? Yeah, I think they're the big three. and, and that. I think that's how they'll finish. Future Assured, Rock and Roll Do, Spirit of St. Louis. And I, I think Canina Provlima, going off what Ryan said, I think he they will swap positions early, or even if they don't, Canina Provlima can go down to the fence and sneak through. OK. Uh, I'm going with Future Assured, the local as well. Five, seven, six and eight. I'm putting the local mare in as a, a value place hope there. Uptown and Beach Girl, one of only two mares in this series. Last time we had a series here in 2001, we had a mare qualify for that final, Lombo Repeater. And just a little side note as well. Means nothing, but back in 2001, opening night heats over a mile, no favourite successful. Holmes DG beaten as an odds-on favourite. See New York beaten as favourite. Shaker Maker beaten as favourite. We've got a lot of favourites here, very short price favourites, so it'll be interesting to see if the tide turns. So that is Heat 1 for the Pacers Friday night. Round 1, Heat 2 for the Pacers comes up as race number 4 on Friday night at Albion Park, and it's the Victorian that is the favourite, Better Eclipse, Jess Tubbs, Greg Sugars, and he strikes a very winnable heat, and as a result, punters are getting around him. But there's a number of locals that are also well drawn here and looking to be a bit of a threat and sort of gain maximum points so they can force their way into the grand final on December 16. How did you analyse this heat when you first laid eyes on it, Darren? Yeah, well, I think... Firstly, my eyes went straight to Captain Shuffle's gate speed horse there in gate number two. Better Eclipse, he's an interesting runner in that he came to Albion Park last year as a four-year-old, second in the, uh, the Rising Sun. They then gave him a shot in the Sunshine Sprint and he came out and was successful off a, off a good trip there. So here we see him in a mile again. That Sunshine Sprint arguably a lot stronger than what he meets in this heat. So um, he's one of those horses, you look through his record, he's won nearly a million dollars now. He's up around the $800,000 mark. And he just seems to always be under the radar. He's not one that, um, you know, you, you turn around and he's in your first sort of train of thought or conversation. Mm. So he's a bit of a sleeper there out in gate five. Not sure where he maps, especially with Captain Shuffles drawn to his inside, but um, better zip it than in six. He, you look at him and what he's done on 
sort of can't really make a case for him. Classy Washington, he's going to get a perfect trip in gate one. Does have good gate speed, so he should be able to hold uh, hold the pocket trip. So um, that is, of course, after his run last week, it's provided he hasn't got too big a headache. I got a headache just watching how hard he got hammered in front, and he fought on and won. So full kudos to him out of that run. Ryan, uh, one of the key runners in this heat is better zip it. He won the Nullarbor back uh, in, what, earlier this year in Perth, million dollar race. Hasn't won a race since, but he looked really sharp in his most recent trial. So how does he sort of fit into this heat? I really don't know, Chris. Mm. Um, first up since the Queensland Winter Carnival. He's actually one of five horses that come into the pacing series off a significant gap between runs. Um, he's not... His gate speed's okay. He's not certainly not crossing them. Um, I do think Cam Hart, though, will probably balance up the start and then continue to press forward. And he actually might work to the breeze and, and give better Eclipse the 1-1 one, one cover. Okay, well, let's take a look back at last Saturday night. Classy Washington. Darren just referenced this race. Classy Washington, big skewy. They were going at one another a long way from home. Neither horse taking a backward step. And they took it right to the line. And there were some pretty handy horses uh, struggling a long way out here. Time was awesome. Classy Washington got there by a head margin. That race was over 2,138 metres. So he comes back to the mile here on Friday night. The big question mark with Classy Washington, how does he bounce out of that race last Saturday night and how does he line up here? So uh, Barrier 1 gives him uh, every opportunity to gain some maximum points. So Ryan, who are you going to select to win this head? Are you with Better Eclipse and Clearly? No, not Clearly. I'm okay. certainly with Better Eclipse. Um, they opened 260. I thought that was a great price. Mm -hmm. Into odds on now, maybe that's a touch of unders. Maybe his true price is sort of around even money. Um, I think he's a logical top pick, but I certainly think Classy Washington from the perfect draw is going to get every opportunity to stalk the speed, run top three. I think if there's going to be an, uh, a blowout in a heat, I think this is it. Okay, yeah, I think that's fair as well. well uh, here's an interesting point for you, Darren. Uh, you love a stat. Jason Grimson's trained the last two Inter Dominion winners. He's never won an Inter Dominion heat. He's got better zip at lining up here, and he's got the very short price favourite last start New Zealand Cup winner, Swayze, going around later as well. So, better zip it. Do you give him a, a winning hope here? Well, if Jason's hearing that stat, I'm thinking he'd be, he'd be <laughs> wanting to keep that stat going because while it'd be great to win a heat, I'm, I think the final's the, the, the sweeter fish, that's for sure. But, yeah, I, I can't go... I can't get... Uh, warm about better zip it at all. I think mm. he come to Queensland in the winter. He got second in a in a Redcliffe Cup behind Loyalists. So um, yeah, I, I think he does go around and sits outside them at some point. But um, yeah, I, I can't be with him. I think Captain Shuffles will run a big mile. Um, you know, Map really in his favour here. He can get out and and really push the button and test them. He's got a PB of fifty one three, and if he can run anything near that, he's going to be right in the finish. Okay, so you're giving the Queenslander a really good chance, but you are tipping better Eclipse. Yeah, better Eclipse on top. I think Captain Shuffles gets his chance to to create an upset. All right, I'm going five one two and four. I'm putting in uh, one of the other locals, LL Cool J. Ryan, uh, you might be cheering on this one here, LL Cool J. Hopefully he can earn some good points on the opening night. So that is race four. That is heat number two for the Pacers. Round one, heat three, features the series favourite for the pacing division, and that's Leap to Fame, the local hero. As it stands, only one Queensland-trained horse has won an Inter-Dominion, and that's the, uh, the mighty champion, Blacks of Fake. He won it a record four times, contested six finals. He was placed in the other two. So can Leap to Fame become the second Queensland trained winner of an Inter Dominion. He is going to be very hard to beat in the series and he is going to start at a very short quote here on Friday night. Yeah, it certainly is and that's, that's off the back of a few things, just how good he is, the heat he comes up against, um, where he's drawn, he can press forward here and take control of this and uh, yeah, it's, it's all in his favour for this first heat, that's for sure. It, doesn't really look to be anything there that can go too much against him. I tell you one thing that stood out with this heat, the speed drawn to his inside, they're going to go hard because they're going to jostle for that position to find the back of Leap to Fame because I think eventually he'll be in front. So you've got Deus Ex who's very fast gate too and this Victorian Helliver possesses very good gate speed so they might go hard early here. Yeah, he's got a hell of a good amount of gate speed <laughs> and he can certainly get across but I think Deus Ex 
what we've seen of him this campaign, he's been really good. And, um, you know, this is the, the, the big time, the big step up for him. But I think he can fire out. I think he can cross make my Memphis and, and he's the one then to let Larry, uh, wave Larry on by and then sit in behind him and get top opportunity to, to get that second place. All right, Ryan, would it be fair to say, away from Leap to Fame, it looks really wide away from Leap to Fame. So if you're playing the multiples here, you can go far and wide. Yeah, I honestly think so. I've got a bit of a value place bet in this race. I think that's, that's good shopping in the form of Nerano. Um, he's a horse that, he's a bit hot and cold, but his best is excellent. Two starts ago, gave Swayze 10 lengths at the cages down at Menangle. They went 52 over the 2300, and he ran into about, you know, home in 53, but ran into about 10 metres. It was career best. Cam Hart jumps aboard. Jason Grimson's back in town. I think Nerano, he's run third in the Lensmith Mile. Um, I think from a place point of view, he's, he's good shopping. Okay, okay. Nerano, the place over there. Let's, Let's go, go back and have a look at Leap to Fame. Uh, just crush his rivals in the Queensland Cup. Here he is out in front, less than 400 metres to run, and now he's really starting to power up here, Leap to Fame. As I said earlier, this was a track record performance on the night, and the track was probably a little off as well, which just adds further merit to the performance here of Leap to Fame, 51.7 for 2,138 metres. Uh, I don't think the track record's in any sort of doubt here on, on Friday night, 49.2, um, depending on how hard they go early in this race, but he's clearly the horse to beat, and he looked like he was absolutely uh, just in the zone there. So it's his series to lose for mine. So if we're going to be playing the exotics, and I think we have to, given how short Larry is going to start, what are we looking at? Yeah, well, for me, I think, Deus Ex is, is the one there that can, can pinch second. I think he's first to the pegs, and he was okay in that race as well. Um, you know, I, I've liked what he did. Similar sort of scenario a few runs back. Fired out from gate five, found the front, let go, and then held on for second. Similar position here he can achieve. I think Speak the Truth, it's interesting here, Speak the Truth and Can't Find a Better Man, two uh, really good four-year-olds, both probably didn't want Leap to Fame's heat but they've both come up coming up against him fresh up so I think they can run a top three and you could throw Nerano in there for third as well but um, I, I'm playing leap to fame on top from two six and nine one two six and nine I think the fence will be the place to be all right from a form point of view Ryan how do you sort of assess can't find a better man and speak the truth given they are fresh up into this series I have really big opinions of both horses. Um, I, I think this series might be the making of Can't Find a Better Man. Um, he won the South East Queensland Derby when he beat Leap to Fame um, you know, over, just over 12 months ago. He's, he's a really high speed tactical horse. He kind of reminds me of a young Better Eclipse. He's sort of in that sort of mould. Um, speak the truth, well, I'm probably against them both from the point of view of that they're, they're first up here. Mm. Like, what, what do we expect? Um, I'm not sure. I'm probably, you know, prefer to be with the race fit horses. I certainly think Deus Ex can be first to the peg line and he'll hold hell of a quite easily. Release uh, Leap to Fame and, you know, that a few others will be fighting out the other place spots. All right, well, I'm going to go with Leap to Fame, obviously, but as far as the exotics, I'm going to put in the, the locals here. Two Deus Ex, one Make Mine Memphis, he can sit on the peg line here, and even number eight, Senate, if he's three or four back on the inside, uh, and it's a blistering last half, he might just be able to pinch a, a, a minor prize there. I just find it interesting, like Nerano's drawn outside of Leap to Fame, can't find a better man, also drawn deep, and Black Sedan, who is the track record holder, he's out in seven. They're going to have to work at some point, aren't they? Yeah, certainly are. And Black's a dance, like we didn't even mention him in any of that conversation, and here we are at a mile trip where he's the track record holder. So, yeah, it, it's going to be a tough night for him, and especially sort of looking deeper into the series as the distances step up. So, um, But he's the track record holder, can find a gate. All right, well, that is heat number three, and that's the heat that does feature the series' favourite leap to fame. Looking forward to seeing him in action Friday night. Round one, heat four, and this is the final heat for the Pacers on Friday night. And this is the heat that features the last start New Zealand Cup winner, Swayze. Of course, remembering Swayze was able to lower the colours of Leap to Fame earlier this year at Albion Park in the Grand Circuit race, the Blacks are fake. So this is going to be very interesting. Darren, it was on, it was off, it was on, it was off, it's back on again. So here he is lining up. There was confusion whether or not he was going to take his spot in the series. But he lines up and he draws gate two. And he, like Leap to Fame, is at a very short quote. Is he past the post here? Um, 
betting would say yes. Yeah. He's so short in the market. For me, if he's going to be vulnerable at any point in this series, this is the time it is. Yeah. Um, if he gets through this easily enough, wins it, I think the others will have a big headache on their hands through the through to Saturday the 16th. But uh, I think this is his chance if he is going to be vulnerable. The trip, um, he's not push button speed out. It's a front line that's got plenty of speed to his outside and there'll be, I think, in this heat, plenty wanting to have a really good look. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. Let, let's look at the gate speed of Turn It Up. Arguably one of the fastest horses off the arm in Australian harness racing. And this is him leaving the gate. This is the drone footage coming out of the, uh, the race earlier in the year. And uh, he is just push button at the start. So, Ryan, as I come to you, do you agree with Darren that if he's going to be beaten, this is probably the, the heat, given that it is a mile and there's just that little bit of uncertainty about the whole series for him, or do you think he's a lock? I think I, think I agree with the, uh, the situation that this is the potential that he gets, uh, potentially is, is rolled. I think the sort of that dollar ten-ish price is pretty sure. You know, maybe his true price is more around dollar forty, dollar fifty. Um, lots of gate speed here. Um, mm. Nilla Playboy is going to be trying his best to push forward and hold up and get the back of turn it up. Hot and Treacherous is going to come out all guns blazing to try to get over. And Mr McLaren, well, he's lightning as well. So, but every time I, I think, oh, maybe turn it up won't get over, Bush, over he goes. Mm. He's, he is just so quick. So that's one thing I am confident in. Turn it up is in front after about 200 metres. What happens next? Does Swayze make a mid-race move and basically press on at the bell? I think, I think that's on the cards, and if that does happen, well then, you, you know, the real short quote will be justified. Okay. Now, Darren, you go back to that Black's a fake race that he won earlier this year, beating Leap to fame. Turn It Up was able to spear out lead and then release Swayze. That was 2,600 metres. It's a mile here. We all know that Turn It Up is going to lead this race. There's no question about that. He's super fast. Given the fact that Jason Grimson hasn't trained a heat winner, uh, but this guy's unbeaten for him, what, nine starts now, nine victories. Does he want to keep that momentum going with Swayze? Or does he just keep the eyes on the big prize like he has for the last two years? Uh, call me crazy, but I think turn it up. If he's ever going to do anything, this is his perfect opportunity. Number of weeks between runs, he loves to be fresh, he loves the mile. And sectionally, he was the best performer out of that Queensland Cup chasing home leap to fame. His last mile was just off the chart. So... I think if they, they spear out and lead, I think they hold and try and take it all the way. Yeah, well, that's certainly on the cards. And I think going back to that drone footage, if you had a, where he's come across, he had hot and treacherous to his inside. He was at length in front of him as the gate released. So, uh, And then Future Assured, who we're thinking is going to lead the first heat from gate five, he was he was straight across in front of him as well. That's Future Assured down in gate one. So, um, you know, turn it up. It's... He didn't even have the left-hand blinker on there. He's just like a Queensland driver. He changed lanes with no blinker. So, um, you know, I think he gets across easily. I think Shane will probably opt for cover. But, like you say, this is his chance to, to really to push it out. I think Swayze probably eventually gets there. If he doesn't, going back to your Jason Grimson piece, yeah, does he want to... Pre um, preserve the horse right the way through the series. Well, he doesn't want to give him a gut buster here. Interestingly, nine starts, nine wins since he's joined the Grimson Stable. Eight of those have not been at the mile. His very first win, he took him out to Bathurst, 1,700 trip, won that. Since then, hasn't been over the mile. Mm. It's interesting here with Swayze. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. From a, a betting perspective, can't dive into that price. Yeah. The, the two things I'm sure about is... Turn it up, gets over, and he finds the fence. Middle Playboy's already got barrier one, so he's going to get a peg strip. So those two horses, the place, that's my betting angle. OK. Well, that is heat number four. That's the final heat for the Pacers. And it features Swayze, and there's so many question marks surrounding Swayze with this heat on Friday night. But I think turn it up, the local, might be a chance of just pegging one back on Swayze. We'll wait and see that heat coming through Friday night. OK, the Trotters now. This is round one, heat two. And this is the heat that features this brilliant Victorian mare, Queen Elida. She comes up with a good draw for trainer Brent Lilly. Chris Alford coming up to partner this star mare. And she is going to be at a very short quote. Darren, was it easy trying to map this race with her coming up with that nice front row draw? Yeah, I think you'd just have to respect her enough that map-wise she works her way to the front. She's, she's all class take nothing away from that last start. It was just believed that she didn't quite 
might uh, be able to get over the top of. So you, you factor that run in. It's, uh, it's really good. I think she gets to the front, and I don't think anyone probably really wants to, to sit outside her in the early stages. I think she might just be getting away with a, a nice soft trip in front here. We know Hatchback's quick out, but uh, I think Sugar and Spice has got enough early speed that he'll want Queen Elida in front, not Hatchback. So um, that sort of sets up there. And Adele, I just think they might be a little bit more conservative round one. I know it's the mile, but I think this is the round to, to just see her work home over the top of them. Really good effort a few starts back where they sat back till about the 800 and then let her go and she really let rip. So she's only just back into the draw too, so they probably don't want to fizz her up too much. OK, Darren, just from a punning viewpoint here, this is the last leg of the Daily Double. So we've got Leap to Fame into Queen Elida. This could be a record new low tab Daily Double figure coming up here. Maybe it'll pay uh, $1.15. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Have, Have you got it past the post here? Yeah, she's, she's an amazing short course. Mm. Um, trotter. She's Australia's best trotting mare. She will be winning. Position and run, I think Alfred will just drive what's in front of him. Hatchback and Sugar and Spice, they're going to take a good shot at each other. Um, he'll probably just pop in and then as soon as they drop anchor, then he might sit round to the front. Okay, well, let's take a look back at the replay of Adele. This is her most recent start a couple of weeks ago at Albion Park. She's one of three mares in this race, Queen Elida, Sugar and Spice and Adele. Uh, as Darren outlined, she's back in the draw now, Adele, but she is drawn a little awkwardly in gate five on the outside of Queen Elida, but maybe Nathan Dawson can just sort of uh, keep an eye on, on Queen Elida all the way here and try and stay as close as he can. But uh, she got picked off here just late by her stable mate, Funny Face. But uh, would you say she's going as well now as what she was back during the Winter Carnival? Uh, she's sort of been a little bit up and down. She was going really good into the, into the Winter Carnival. She then just had a few hiccups in some of those main races. Mm. And then she come good again, and then she sort of tapered again. I think she's ready to, to really fire back up again. I think um, Jack Butler's got her sorted out. Um, he sounds pretty confident in where he's got her now. I think this series, she'll really progress. All right, one horse that's going to be interesting here away from Queen Elida to look at, especially yard watchers, Plymouth Chubb because he's well-named. He's had two runs back from a long layoff, and Peter Manning has gone on record stating he is on the big side. So he's going to get a pretty soft trip here, drawn the inside of the second row. Um, probably likely to stay on the inside. Cam Hart will take the drive, but he'll be one that's worth taking a close look at when they parade. Yeah, he's a highly talented um, mm. trotter, wonderful juvenile. I think this barrier is actually semi-perfect. Yeah. She's going to stalk sugar and spice away. I'm confident if she does everything right, she can hold hatchback. Um, three, three fence maybe, or even leaders back. Um, he's a knockout chance in this heat, without a doubt, if something does go wrong with uh, Queen Alita. Interesting to see how he progresses through the series. Mm. He sort of came back racing. He was quite large, the Victorian boys tell me, and high talent. Think he'll make the final. Yeah, yeah. His first up run was excellent. Probably a little playing last time out. Maybe the second up syndrome caught him there. Darren, who are you selecting, and what are the place hopes here? Yeah, I've got Queen Elida on top. I think she's just too good. Adele, like I said, I think if they sit back with her and not engage early, she's a really good chance of running on over the top. And uh, Hatchback, he should be thereabouts. He's got the quality and Plymouth Chubb with that really soft trip. And yeah, um, I think he should be firing into the finishing placings there at some point. All right, I'm going 4815, and Ryan, you're coming up with 4185. So we're reading from the same hymn book there for Heat 2 for the Trotters there on Friday night. Round 1, Heat 3 for the Trotters, and this is the heat that features the series' favourite and the defending champ, Just Believe. This is his third straight into the Minion series. He was placed two years ago in Sydney, won the series last year in his home state of Victoria. Here he is to defend his title. And lo and behold, he's got barrier one, so that means he is going to be at unbackable odds. So we're really focused on the, uh, the other chances here as far as the exotics are concerned, Darren. But it just looks a, uh, a clear case that he'll lead and win this heat. Yeah, it's, it's all set up for him. Perfect, perfect gait. He's got up here OK. He's travelled well. We know he's been over to Scandinavia, so travel shouldn't be a concern with him. His first up run was super. Um, here he is. It's just, it's all in his favour. And, um, yeah, I think the Candyman can just do whatever the Candyman wants. All right. Did he surprise you with the way he went about 
dismantling Queen of Light and Bendigo first up. They ran a track record. Mm. Absolutely, it sort yeah. of shocked me that he was that far forward off his big winter campaign to, to Sweden. Yeah. Um, promising signs. Yeah, absolutely. So he's going to start a clear favourite. Funny Face is a locally trained mare by uh, Jack and Tara Butler. She's low flying. Let's have a look at her claiming her uh, golden ticket to the Inter Dominion with her victory last time out. So this is the replay we saw earlier. That's her on the back of her stable mate Adele. And uh, she's quite a lethal mare, Darren, in the sense that she can follow very good speed. And she was probably in a long way out here because she just got dragged right into the race at the perfect time and basically just peeled off the back of Adele and had that closing shot. So she goes into this series full of confidence and uh, she's not without a place hope here. No, I, I think she's a really good place hope and um, just following speed is, is her bread and butter. And you saw there in that replay... Pete was able to angle her to the outside. As soon as he got to the outside, the deafening hood come and she found a length sort of straight away. So um, just where he can get her into the run, you take into account here too, Pete has um, he and Chantel's own horse, Gus. He's opted for funny face. Mm -hmm. So I think we can take a good lead out of that about how he thinks she can progress through this series. So, um, yeah, well, I think she's a really good place. So, um, Bully and Harry, he's a bit of an interesting one. Uh, does have good early speed. He doesn't have the speed to get across, I don't think, but where he then positions up, he probably has to sit parked outside Just Believe, which will give Funny Face an ideal trip. All right. Uh, it looks wide away from Just Believe, Ryan. So as far as trying to sort out the exotics here, it's not easy. And like Plymouth Chubb in that previous heat, Maori Law, he's another one that you're going to have to have a good look at in the yard because, what well, he's two runs back off being retired, so he's probably still carrying some excess condition. But he draws to get that favourable trip behind Just Believe. He draws perfectly. Yeah. I think he's an absolute lock to run second here. Um, and Majestic Harry, I think, will sort of grab up at the start and take that three-peg spot. And um, I think that's highly likely to be your in-order trifecta. All right, so you're going one to beat eight. Absolutely. All right, one, eight, two, three, in fact. So there you go, one, eight, two, three. Darren, you're coming up with Just Believe to beat Bully and Harry? Yeah, yeah, I think Bully and Harry can get across there. And I think, like, that then gives Funny Face the run. I'm just a little bit against um, Maori Law, so I just I think we need to see him yeah. again and need to see him off travelling up here as well. Um, you know, he's been been around down in Victoria a couple of runs, trip up just what that what impact that actually has. Yeah, I tend to agree. Uh, initially, you look at Just Believe and you think, who's drawn directly behind him? Maori Law, and then you're just not sure where he's at. So he's going to be a close watch there on Friday night when he parades just to see what sort of condition he is in. But I'm going one, four, three, and seven. Bully and Harry, as Darren out uh, outlined, he's got gate speed, so we'll go forward. Funny face, Amir in good form. And Gus, I'm putting him in as a bit of a blowout chance. That trial that he delivered, and I know trials are trials, races are races, but... He was breathtaking in that trial, beating a pacer and beating it easily. And ran really good time. Yeah. Um, visually, the time, it all, it all stacked up. It's just, it's a big ask for this guy. And I really hope he furnishes well out of this series. He doesn't get into his wayward sort of tendencies that we've seen of him because he's only had 12 starts. Mm. You know, here we are seeing Gus with 12 starts take on a horse that's been in the elite lot. So, yeah. you know, it's... It, He's in the deep end, that's for sure. Yeah, it, it looks too hard, but just off the back of that trial, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a, a blowout chance to run in the top four there. That's gut. So that is round one, heat three for the Trotters. Let's go now to uh, our drivers that are competing on Friday night. Nathan Dawson, the leading driver in the state, in the country. He's got a good book of drives. So too, Adam Sanderson. Star driver Nathan Dawson has a number of drives during ID23 and the first round action gets underway Friday night and he's with us now. Nathan, appreciate the time. Nah, good to be here, Chris. We'll get to these heats in just a moment. Firstly, race one, Frankie Ferocious. This looks a really good run, uh, a race for him given how he performed last week. Yeah, he's going really well of late. Um, you know, he's come up with a pretty nice draw, but it's a little speed to our inside, but um, you know he's pretty quick off the arm, so we'll um, send him forward and see where we end up. OK, over the mile, he can run really fast time. But that run last week, uh, driven off uh, off speed, gee, he attacked the line well. Yeah, he did, you know. Um, over the 21, you know, he can get a little bit keen and, you know, bring himself undone. But over the mile, he can run it hard and, you know, it really suits him. OK, it is a deep race, though. There's a number of informed horses here. Yeah, it is, you know. It's a handy race. Um, 
you know, the, all the horses there are coming off, you know, pretty good runs. So hopefully we can get across to the front and um, he'll take some running down. OK, let's talk about ID23. First series since 2009, the first since 2001 at Albion Park. First and foremost, as the leading driver in the country, are you excited about the series? Yeah, I am. You know, it's going to be the first time that I've been a part of it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it and hopefully we can you know, get ourselves a spot in the final. All right, let's talk about this first heat. Uh, this is a, uh, a heat over the mile, so all heats on, on the opening night over the mile. Uptown Beach Girl, one of two mares contesting this series. She's drawn out in six. What were your first thoughts about the draw? Yeah, I was pretty disappointed with the draw. Um, I thought if she drew good and you know could get pretty handy, she'd actually you know run a good race, but... From out there, we're most likely just going to drive for some luck and uh, you know, see if he can pick up some points. OK, you're sandwiched in between the two favourites. Future Assured to your inside, Rock and Roll Do to your outside. There's going to be a bit of power early, isn't there? Yeah, there will. Um, you know, there'll be some good speed on. And, you know, if I probably drew underneath Future Assured, um, you know, I'd probably go forward. But being outside him, I don't think I'll be able to get across. So, um yeah, we'll just drive a little bit conservative this week. Okay, the four runs in the in the fortnight. Will that suit Uptown Beach Girl? Yeah, she's a big gross mare. Um, you know, I don't think it'll worry her at all. So, um, if she can come up with you know a good draw and you know keep getting along the fence, um, you know she'll get some points along the way. Okay, as I said, the first round of heats so over the mile, then we build up. The longer, the better for her, or do you think she's prime for the mile trips? Um, I reckon Miles probably, you know, if I had a preference, I'd take that. Um, but she can, she can definitely run the trip as well. OK, well, that's Uptown Beach Girl there in the first heat, and she is in very good form, but just drawn a little awkwardly. What about race four, Captain Shuffles? He comes up with a good gate, gate two. He's a last start winner. How do you think his chances look here? Yeah, I think it's a really good draw for him. Um, you know, it's probably a shame that Classy Washington's inside us. I'm um, using good form at the moment, so... I don't know if I've got the speed to get over, but um, we'll have a little look and, you know, we'll drive in pretty positive. Drawn side by side, it's tough, isn't it, when, you know, horses possess similar type gate speed? Yeah, it is, you know, it's always better to have, you know, two gaps between you or something like that. But um, we'll have a little look, um, you know, I'm not even too worried about having to sit in the chair over the mile. Um, he's going pretty well at the moment. OK, how did you grade that last start victory? Uh, he was very strong. Some were saying he was knocking off towards the line. How did you sort of assess the performance? Yeah, it's just getting into a little bit of a habit, um, you know, of knocking off at the line. Um, he's not actually all out. He's just uh, it's more of a habit he's gotten into. So if there's something there racing him, he, he keeps going. But, um, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way he's coming along. OK, the time was excellent in that race. Yeah, it was. You know, you can't go much quicker. Um, yeah, it's probably one of the quicker ones of the night, so um, it just proves how good he's going. Is this his best opportunity, the fact that he's got a good draw and it's a mile? Is this his best opportunity to gain maximum points? I think so. Um, you know, he does have very good high speed as well, so that's going to help him along the way. So, to be honest, I think if he gets good trips in all the heats, um, you know, he's going to be running on to get some points. The Victorian, better eclipse. Is he the obvious threat here? Yeah, he is, you know, and obviously Classy Washington. Um, you know, I really like him as a horse, so um, I reckon they'll be the ones fighting it out and, you know, hopefully we can get over them. All right, well, that's Captain <laughs> Shuffles there in race number four, which is heat number two for the Pacers. What about Deus Ex in, in race five? This is heat three. You've got to contend with Leap to Fame, but the draw seems ideal on paper. Gate two, looks like you've got the speed to head off Make My Memphis drawn to your inside, so that gives him every opportunity to um, run top three. Yeah, it does, you know, he's going really well and, you know, his form shows that. So he's come up with a good draw for him and, you know, he's got that early speed, as you said. So if we can get over and then, you know, let Leap to Fame go, um, we should be getting some good points. OK. How do you assess the gate speed, uh, in particular those out wide? Can't find a better man's first up and he's drawn in six. Black's a dance track record holder in seven. Do you expect them to sort of blast off the arm early? Oh, they might blast, but I don't think they're going to get too far, um... No, I think Leap to Fame's getting out pretty good at the moment, so um, he's really the only one that I'll be looking to let go. Um, if I have to hold up over the mile, I won't be too scared either. His last couple of runs have been really good. In fact, this campaign, he's been a really good day as X, so there's every chance that, uh, you know, he can earn good points here. Yeah, that's right, you know, and it's his ideal trip over the mile, so 
you know, we'll make the most of that. All right. Well, that is Deus Ex there in race five. What about in race six? This is heat four. Hot and treacherous. Of all your drives, so you've got Uptown Beach Girl, you've got Deus Ex, uh, and you've got Captain Shuffles. Is hot and treacherous your main drive? I think so. Um, you know, he's probably the one who's got the class and, you know, you know, big race experience. So um, he's probably the main one that we're looking, you know, they're hoping to get through. But, um, you know, it's a little bit awkward in the draw we've come up with. Um, so we just have to hope for a bit of luck. What do we make of that last start performance? He was at the rear of the field. That was the Queensland Cup. He got left parked out there. They went track record time. How do we sort of gauge that performance? Yeah, you know, it's probably just unlucky the way we ended up. Um, you know, we had to go early and couldn't get anywhere, so we got stuck outside him. Um, you know, and he was entitled to stop the way he did, you know, any horse would, you know, in that type of trip. So I wouldn't really take too much out of it. All right. This is a fascinating uh, heat for a number of reasons. Swayze is the clear favourite. He's unbeaten for Jason Grimson. He's dual grand circuit winner, Blacks are fake, and last start in the New Zealand Cup. He was coming, he wasn't coming, he was coming, he wasn't coming. Here he is lining up. Probably not his preferred trip, the mile, and he's got a, a stack of speed to his outside. You being one of them, hot and treacherous. Mr. McLaren, turn it up. How does this race sort of shake out in the first 200 metres? Yeah, I think um, Swayze probably gets shuffled back a little bit and then put into it at some stage. But I dare say Mr. McLaren and um, turn it up will be the ones getting out of the fence first and then um, you know, just seeing what they're going to do from there. Do you want to try and get in front of Swayze if, if possible early? Yeah, if possible, if I could clear him, um, would make life a lot easier. Um, then I'd be up pretty handy. So over the mile, you know, I wouldn't be too scared um, having a good look. All right. Well, that's a, a fascinating heat, that one there for the Pacers. Uh, we return to the Trotters, heat two, Adele. Uh, beaten last time out behind her stable mate, Funny Face. Where is she now compared to winter carnival time? I actually was pretty happy with the last run. Um, you know, she did all the work and funny face, she's got the beautiful trip, you know, and just got her late. So I reckon she's going a lot better than what the form looks and I'm pretty confident she's back to her best. Okay, so she's back in the draw as well. So you're drawn outside of Queen Elida. So where do you want to be early here? Uh, you know, it's only a small field and I think probably her speed's, you know, the best attribute she has. So if we can just get across there and, uh, you know, find a pretty handy spot and, you know, and dictate the race, um, you know, I'll be pretty happy with, you know, turn it into a sprint home. Do you give yourself any chance of beating the favourite Queen Elida? Uh, if she's on a, you know, the A game, I think she can go with it. Um, you know, whether, if the draws are changed, it's probably be more of a benefit for me. Okay, but you're happy with the way she's going right now? Yeah, I am. I actually believe she's going better than what she looks and, um, you know, I'm pretty excited to go through the, you know, heats with her. All right, excellent. Uh, race nine on Saturday, or on Friday night, I should say. Uh, Orchid Stride, second up for Team Grimsey. Looked like she just choked off there last week. What are you expecting here on Friday night? Yeah, I really like the mare and think she can do quite a good job up here in Queensland. So I won't be taking too much out of last week. Uh, things didn't look real good for her, but... Um, you know, I'm pretty confident going forward to, um, tomorrow. Okay. And the last race, uh, Bronski Delight, you had the choice of several drives. Was it an easy choice in the end to make? Uh, I was tossing up between, you know, the new one of Graham's, um, you know, Bronski, but she's got the form on the board. Um, you know, I was pretty impressed with what she did last start, so um, I had to go with her. Yeah, she went good time last start, and she looked like she won well. I know it was sort of set up, but uh, the way she finished off was pleasing. Yeah, things played out really nice for her, but... Um, you know, she still had to do it and she proved that she could. So if we can get a good trip, um, you know, there's no reason she can't do it again. Yeah, and that's crucial, isn't it? You've got to get a good trip because gate six is sticky. Yeah, it is. You know, her best asset is probably her finishing speed. So, um, you know, it's uh, pretty, you know, ideal if she has to get a good trip. All right. This is night one of ID23. Which driver are you looking forward to most? Or you're just looking forward to being part of ID23? Yeah, no, I'm pretty excited about all of them. Um, you know, the more I can get into the final, uh, the better. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get them all in and get plenty of points on the board. All right, awesome. We'll see you trackside. Thanks, Chris. Adam Sanderson now joins us to go through his drives on ID23 opening night, and he's in the hot seat now. Adam, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. Are you excited about competing in ID23? Oh, look, you've got to be, you know, it's... Um you know, it's not often you um, you get to drive in a series like this, so um, you know you've got to be excited. 
All right, well, let's start with race two. Heat one for the Trotters. Van Sank is your drive. He's second up. Were you really pleased with the way he hit the line first up? Yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was really stoked with his run. He's, um, you know, he set it a long way back, and, and they run pretty, you know, pretty solid sectionals off the front, and his, his own sectionals the last half were um, probably as, as quick as he can go. So, um, you know, upwards and forwards for him. Okay, so gate six here on, on uh, Friday night. Are you likely to drift back, given what's drawn on your inside? Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a sticky draw, so um, we'll just go back, take our medicine, and... Um, you know, hopefully we can we can lob into a place and, and get some points. So you're hoping the Victorians overdo it, Mufasa, Metro, Olavici, all the talks about them for this heat. So if they overdo it, hopefully Van Sank gets over the top. Yeah, pretty much that's what we need. Um, Mufasa Metro's got, you know, pretty good gate speed and, and um, you know, he was terrific last start. So he looks the one to beat and, and as you say, we just we just need a bit of tempo. Okay. How do you think Van Sank will cope with the series, the, the four runs in the fortnight? Probably not ideal for him, you know, he, he's just an out and out miler, you know, that's his, that's his go to. So, um, uh, you know, if we, if we sort of just drive him quietly and, and hopefully we can get through it. And, um, you know, he's always a chance just with his with the sheer speed and, and, you know, a soft run. All right. Well, fingers crossed uh, he does well, Van Sank. Race three, this is heat one for the Pacers. I cast no shadow. He's the defending champ. He won the series last year in Melbourne. That is, in fact, his last win. What have you made of the three runs so far this campaign? Yeah, he sort of, you know, he, he built sort of nicely to his last start and, and we sort of drove him quite um, quite aggressive just to see, um, you know, where he's at and, and he didn't respond too well to that. So um, he'll have to be driven quiet and, um, you know, he, he's probably, a, you know, even an outside chance even to make the final the way he's going. OK. There's a lot of power drawn to your outside here. The two favourites, uh, Future Assured Gate 5, Rock and Roll Do, out in Gate 7. So... Ideally, where where do you want to be early here with I cast no shadow? Uh, yeah, the the sort of main the main dangers are on the, on the outside, so they'll they'll work for it at some stage. So if we can just um, you know slide across and and settle handy, he, he might be a, you know a top five chance. Okay, but he needs to lift on this last start. Yeah, no, he, he definitely has to. You know, um, he, you know the gas tanks are pretty near and empty at the, at the stage, I think. Okay, so he needs a little bit of luck there, I cast no shadow. What about in race number five? This is heat three for the Pacers. Speak the truth. Uh, obviously, you've got to contend with Leap to Fame here, and you've clashed with him uh, multiple times previously. He goes into this series fresh, Adam, speak the truth. He had a little workout last week. What was the takeaway from the workout at the track? Yeah, no, terrific workout. He, he just worked by himself and worked a good uh, solid last mile, and his heart was good, and he, and he felt good, so... Um, uh, it's, it's always, you know, an unknown factor going to a series like this fresh, but um, hopefully we're just building at the right time. And, um, you know, it's a shame we sort of run into leap to fame in the first night, but, uh, you know, we're going to clash with them eventually. So um, we'll just we'll take our medicine. Yeah, you, you've said uh, previously with Speak the Truth, um, he's the type of horse, once he rolls out on race day, whether he's first up, sixth up or, or whatever it is, he's there to race. So you're expecting a forward showing here? Yeah, you know, he, he definitely knows when, uh, when race day is and... Um, you know, he always seems to race good fresh, so uh, hopefully, um, you know, that, that run on Saturday just topped him off and, um, you know, I'm sure no matter how the race pans out, he's always going to give 100% anyway. So in many ways, this could be a favourable draw, given that he is fresh up. There looks to be a heap of early speed there off that front line, so the harder the better for you early and he can be strong late. Yeah, I think so. You know, uh, if, if they go solid early, he's definitely going to be the one... Uh, finishing as good as any at the finish. Surely they have to go hard early. You look at that front line, whether they're drawn in close or out wide, there's got to be some early tempo. Yeah, you'd think so. You know, m most people want to be sort of getting there before um, before Leap to Fame comes and, and either handing up or, or making them do a bit of work. So uh, we'll just be, you know, playing our, playing our area at the back and hopefully, um, yeah, as I say, we need, a, we need a solid tempo and he'll be finishing off. But he'll keep improving throughout the series, won't he? Yeah, for sure. You, you look at his runs throughout the winter, you know, he, he never took a backward step and had some pretty hard runs, so um, he, he seems to thrive on, on good hard racing. So Leap to Fame's the horse to beat in this heat. Is he the horse to beat in your eyes for the whole series? Uh, I think it comes down to draws, you know. Um, you know, Swayze's a world beater at the moment. Um, you know, he beat him fair and square, and last time they, they, beat, they sort of clashed, so um, I think everyone's sort of downplaying just because he had that sort of hiccup, you know, uh, when he, when he come back. So it's going to be interesting, but I think it comes down to draws. I don't think either can sit outside each other and, and, and beat, each, beat them. So um, it's just going to be a war, and hopefully we're, uh, we're sitting on the back one and we can get over top of, of both of them. As a proud Kiwi, were you disappointed that Swayze was able to win your race with the New Zealand Cup? 
Oh, no, you know, it was sort of one of those things, you know, you never like seeing the Aussies win, but um, it's probably probably unfortunate that it, it was, oh, it was probably fortunate for them they, they struck a pretty ordinary New Zealand Cup. What about Cosimo? What can you tell us about this horse? Race six, it's heat four of the pacing series. Uh, first look at Albion Park, drawn two off the second row, and you're up against Swayze. You're drawn directly behind Swayze. Can he measure up here, Cosimo? You know, his, his form's, you know, uh, you know, not too bad in Victoria. You know, he's sort of finished a couple of placings behind a, a few handy types. He's, he's going to have to step up to um, compete against these, but he looks like a, a horse that follows speed good. And uh, Friday, he looks like it actually uh, the draw sets up that he... He, he will end up getting a good run. OK, you've got options from that draw. You can either go straight to the pegs or, or follow through and maintain that one wide position so you can just play that by ear? Yeah, I think so. You know, obviously turn it up off the front so um, it, he crosses anything. And um, what he does after that, I, I would have thought a mile. He, he might be just sort of keen to stretch a few out. So um, we'll just have to play it by ear. OK, race nine, Uga Chaka. This is your drive. You were with him last week. <laughs> Was it... Probably a bit harsh to say he was a little disappointing last week. No, nah, he was terrible. Um, you know, by his standards, he, he was shocking. Um, he, he's been racing terrific, and um, hopefully it was just a, you know, a bad night because, um, you know, out before that, his runs had been um, terrific. Yeah, you gave him a peach last week. You were following up nicely in that three-wide line, but he just sort of just got left flat-footed there at the 400. Yeah, it was sort of a weird run. You know, um, he, he never felt good at all, and um, I thought he was going to drop out of the 400, and then he sort of... He got going up the straight again, which was, you know, very, uh, you know, it was a very puzzling run. So um, hopefully, yeah, we just put it down to a bad night and, and he can pr produce his best again. All right. And what about this last race on Friday night? Bonnie's Dance. She's drawn gate nine. Two off the second row. She's close. She's been placed the last four. Yeah, she's racing good. Um, you know, it's quite an even field. So um, she relies on luck. And um, if she can get there, she's, uh, if she can get that, she's, um, she'll be finishing off as good as any. All right. Which drive are you most looking forward to? Uh, obviously, speak the truth. You know, we've got to we've got to contend with Larry. Um, you know, tomorrow night. But um, you know, going through the series, he, he looks like my main chance. Awesome. Hey, Adam, appreciate the time. We'll see you at trackside. No worries. Thanks, mate. It's a big 10 race program for night one of ID23, but it's time now to find our best bets for this card. Darren, I'll come to you firstly. What have you marked as your best bet on Friday night? Yeah, I'm striking early. I think Frankie Ferocious, he's a, a top quality three-year-old, um, can get to the front here. He's got good times against his name. And I think uh, Nathan Dawson, just press the button early, get to the front, catch me if you can. They won't be able to. All right, so race one, number four. Big spend for you with the quaddy, $3. So leap to fame. And then you've got three there in that second leg. So one, two, and five. Yeah, just, just going, I think, being able to spend only $3, I think we can just work around Swayze. Like we said, if he is going to be vulnerable in this series, it's this round. So, um, And the other two sort of should just be getting it, getting it done. All right. So the same quality for you, Ryan, there. So a big spend of $3. Your best bets? Uh, let's start in Trotter's Heat, the opening round of the contest. Race two, number one, Mufasa Metro for John Justice to lead and run them a merry dance and then I'm really keen race nine number seven big skewy this guy was off the charts last start when bumping into classy Washington they went around in 52 for the 2100 he just failed there's no classy Washington here tonight let him loose Matty okay my best bet multi-action is so many short price favorites spread across this 10 race program you can pick and choose different races multi them up and you should be able to come out in front as far as the quaddy is concerned I'm just going to steer around Swayze, I'll, I'll take him on here for the for the sake of a dollar. I'll go leap to fame, turn it up, Queen of Lighter, and just believe. So it looks like it is going to be a very skinny quaddy dividend coming up on Friday night. Don't forget the tab market specials, races one through to six, bonus bet back up to fifty dollars if your horse runs second across all nights of ID twenty three. First four jackpots on all of the Inter-Dominion heats as well. So those projected pools are $50,000. So keep that in mind. And given that we've got so many short price favourites, it might be a good option to play as well. The first four standing out, the favourites to win. Guys, it's been a pleasure. This is night one. We'll see you both trackside Friday night. Yeah, looking forward to it. And um, I'm a bit like Plymouth Chubb. Hopefully I lose a bit of condition through the series. Ryan, we'll see you trackside. Fantastic. That's a hard act to follow. Uh, first of 10, getting underway at 5.48.